In this work, we aim to recover a meaningful 3D representation from sparse views. More specifically, given several images and masks of the same instance, as well as a coarse mesh initialization in off-the-shelf poses, we recover a textured 3D representation along with plausible illumination parameters. Recent works, particularly NERF, have demonstrated impressive results in novel view synthesis using volumetric implicit functions. The large representation capacity of these networks allow these models to recover detailed 3D reconstructions. However, deploying these approaches can be challenging in the wild, since they require many views, typically 50 to 100, as well as precisely calibrated cameras, both of which are difficult or impossible to obtain in the wild. And when NERF is applied to setups with few images, it fails to generalize to new viewpoints, even though it can almost perfectly reconstruct the training images. So why does NERF fail with sparse views? One reason is that NERF allows for arbitrary geometry and appearance. While this helps to synthesize fine detail, the increased capacity can result in overfitting and bad local minima. To address this, we propose NERFs, a surface-based representation that recovers shape, texture, and illumination. Although the density representation of volumetric approaches is most general, we note that most objects actually have well-defined surfaces. Secondly, view-dependent appearance should not be arbitrary and can be constrained using existing machinery. To represent surface-based geometry, we use a shape predictor that deforms UV coordinates on a sphere to a predicted shape. Note that this guarantees a watertight enclosed surface. Similarly, we can represent texture using a texture predictor that maps UV coordinates to RGB pixel values. Together, the shape and texture can be used to output a textured mesh. However, these components are not sufficient to modeling view-dependent effects conditioned on viewing direction. Suppose we have a camera C looking at point X from direction B. The NERF solution to computing the radiance of this point is to directly train a neural network. But if we know that we're rendering a point that actually lies on a surface, then we can use techniques from computer graphics for rendering. In particular, the surface-based rendering equation gives us a way of computing the total radiance at X by integrating over every direction omega over the unit hemisphere centered at the normal. The rendering equation includes the BRDF, which captures material properties such as color, the incoming radiance at X in direction omega, and a cosine reduction factor. Note that most of these terms are actually geometric and can be recovered directly given a predicted shape and camera. This leaves just the BRDF and lighting to be learned, which we model using neural networks. More specifically, we approximate the rendering equation using Fong shading, which weights the texture prediction by the view independent diffuse lighting in the view dependent specular lighting. We model illumination using an environment map which corresponds to the assumption that all light sources are infinitely far away, and thus depends only on the direction. We train a neural environment map that predicts the grayscale environment illumination from any direction. The only remaining parameters that cannot be computed from the geometry, texture, and environment map are the two material properties, the specular coefficient and the shininess, which we model as parameters shared over the entire surface for simplicity. Here we visualize this decomposition. The 3D shape, unwrapped texture map, and unwrapped environment map are all neural functions of spherical coordinates. Here, the generated environment map shows light coming primarily from above. We can use the predicted shape to recover surface normals. The surface normals and environment map allow us to recover the diffuse lighting, which encodes for the view independent component of the illumination. Then, using the normals, environment map, and material properties, we can compute the specular highlights, capturing the view dependent component of the lighting. By combining these together, we can render an image. We optimize the networks and camera poses jointly with respect to each of the training images. We optimize standard perceptual mask and regularization losses. Note that being able to optimize a perceptual loss at all is another benefit of our service-based method over volumetric approaches. Volumetric approaches can only render a bundle of rays rather than the whole image due to computational constraints. Here we visualize some qualitative results. 
We demonstrate our approach on a variety of indoor and outdoor objects. We find that a coarse cuboid is often sufficient as the shape initialization. We also demonstrate our approach on internet scale images from online marketplaces. Each instance typically has eight images from which we recover a detailed 3D reconstruction that can be viewed from any direction. Each model is initialized from the same car mesh. The standard evaluation protocol of novel view synthesis requires held out images associated with ground truth poses, which are used to query a trained model. While call map is the tool of choice for recovering camera poses, we find that classical structure for motion fails catastrophically in our low data wide baseline regime. In addition, objects often exhibit specularities and lack textures, making it difficult to find correspondences. While classical methods that recover precise camera poses fail, learning based approaches such as pose from shape can still output approximate but inherently erroneous poses. This means that training and test cameras are approximate complicating both training and evaluation. We propose two different evaluation setups. First, we attempt to emulate existing novel view synthesis evaluation by constructing the most accurate camera poses possible. We manually tune camera poses that are jointly optimized over all images as an instance using our approach, and we treat these poses as pseudo ground truth. We then keep these camera poses fixed during both training and testing. Here, we compare our approach with IDR, which extracts a surface from an SDF representation. We also train a NERF with the mask loss and other adjustments to be more competitive given few views. Finally, we show our approach with the radiance directly conditioned on position and view direction, as done in NERF. We find that our surface-based representation generalizes much better across unseen viewpoints. In addition, the NERF ablation suffers from similar ghosting artifacts to NERF, suggesting that factoring illumination is an effective regularizer. Acquiring pseudo ground truth cameras is costly. Thus, we also propose a more realistic evaluation for in the wild view synthesis. To account for approximate camera poses, each approach can refine the camera initializations during both training and testing. Here, we visualize each approach after being trained with approximate camera initializations. We find that NERSE generalizes best in this unconstrained but more realistic setup. In terms of quantitative evaluation, we find that NERSE significantly outperforms the baselines with both fixed pseudo ground truth cameras and the refined approximate cameras. Thank you for watching. The paper, code, data, and videos can be found on the project webpage.